So on this problem, you guys see I have y equals x squared minus 18. Now, going back to what I've talked about for all of these, the first thing that I'm going to do is, well, before I get to the zero product property, which we are going to go to, the first thing I'm going to do is set my y equal to 0. Right? Remember, you got, remember I said that's the first thing we got to do? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't write the problem correctly. All right, now, the issue that we have, when we, when we look at the linear equation, I could easily combine 5x and x, right? You can't deal with that. 5x and x have the same variable factor, so we can combine them. They're like terms. The problem here is this has x squared, which has two x's as its factors, and this has x, which only has one x as a factor. Therefore, they don't have the same variable factors. So we can't combine them. So we need to think of a different way to solve this problem, because we can't combine them. So that different way involves a very, very important property, the zero product property. And you're going to want to write this down and keep this with you, because for the rest of this chapter, we will be using this property. And the property goes like this. If you have two numbers that are multiplied together, and their product is equal to 0, then one or both of the numbers has to equal 0. Oh, no, not and. Or. One or both has to equal 0. Right? right? Now, what's important about the zero product property, this doesn't just work for numbers. This also works for expressions. If I have an expression, like a binomial, times another expression, then one of these has to equal 0. And the important thing is, since I write this up, do I now have an equation? I know this kind of looks funky because it has letters and stuff. But can I now solve for x? Yeah. yeah, and you guys should be familiar with solving you know, for variables when it's only variables, because we did literal equations. Well, I was solving it. So since it's minus b, I had to add b on both sides. Both yeah, yeah, I was just, yeah, it's not going to be like this. Just, I was just showing like two different ways for it. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to take this problem and we need to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. Multiply. Yes? Huh? Using the nope, we're not going to. Well, we could do that. Um, we could, but I'm not going to go through that in this one. But we need to rewrite an expression as a product. And the name of that rhymes with pactoring. Factoring. Factoring. That now, <laughs> basically, ladies and gentlemen, factoring, again, is just rewriting a problem as a product. And to do that, we're going to use the aid of division. So let me, let me go through an example. If I take 12, if I take the number 12, and I take 12, and I divide it by one of its factors, which would be 2, what is the answer to that? Six. Six. Now, if I take what I divided by, which I call my divisor, and then I take the answer, which we call the quotient, and I multiply them, does that give me back my original um, number? Yeah. Yes. So I'll say this again. If you take your divisor, what you're dividing by, and multiply it by the quotient, what the answer is, you get back your original problem. So what we need to do is we need to figure out if I, a divisor of this. What can I divide into both of those? And our divisor we're going to call our GCF, which is our greatest common factor. So we want to find a number or a term that divides evenly into both of our terms. 2 does divide into both of them. What about for variables? What, other var what else divides into this? x. All right, we can't say x squared because x squared doesn't evenly divide into x. I can't say 18 because 18 doesn't divide into 2. So you have to use the greatest common factor that divides into both of them. Amelia, that's not what you need to be doing right now. You should be taking down notes. Does everybody see that? Yeah, yeah. OK. Now, just like the problem over here, I'm going to divide. Divide both terms, because it's an expression, by 2x. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared divided by x is x. 
18 divided by 2 is positive 9. Oops, is that a minus? Yeah. So when I divide by my GCF, or when I divide by my factor, I get my quotient, which is this. I take my quotient and multiply by what I divided by. What I divided by? 2x. Now, you guys can see, I have now rewritten this problem as a, as a multiplication problem. And if you want to check your work to make sure you did it correctly, apply distributive property. And obviously, 2x so times x is 2x squared. Nope, not yet. 2x times x is 2x squared. And 2x times negative 9 is negative 18x. So we're good there. Um, but now, remember, we need to apply the zero product property. So since I have the product equal to 0, I set both of my factors equal to 0. And there you go. Those are your two answers. Your two factors are 0 and 9. Where'd you come from? Wait.